quite interested in so decision making skills and kind of navigating complexity yeah um, it's something that I think we've both been interested in prior to 2020 but mm. I think it seems to be even more timely now because you know we've got that very clear example of complexity working through a world where there seems to be less value on predictions and the try mm. tested yeah. and much more value on coming up with these new emergent solutions, pivoting, you know, adjusting regularly. Um, so when we talk about complexity, um, I think that can mean different things to different people. You know, like I, I hadn't really considered the, you know, say like a complicated problem could be very different to a complex problem um, until I heard your talk actually in the EMCC a while back. Um, so I suppose to start off, what do you think characterizes complexity? How does it maybe differ to, say, a complicated or a simple problem? Yeah, thanks, Tina. I think that's a great place to start. Um, and I think you're right, just something you said there about like 2020 brought with us uh, a, a huge insight as to what it's like to live in a very complex world where things are changing uh, and things are unpredictable. And that, I think that's that's the that's the real key here. That um, and if you think of the um, as you mentioned the the, the talk I did, uh, I was drawing on this Kinevin framework, which was put together by um, Dave Snowden, who's formerly of IBM, as the way of making sense of the world. And like he divides the world into predictable and unpredictable, really, and that's it. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of us are presented with very simple solutions. And, you know, and even at the moment, like if people come over to, well, it's obvious what we need to do. It's this, mm. it's these, this is the thing we have to do. But that only works if you've got a simple problem. And the simple problem is where there is an answer. You know, there is an actual answer. You say, that is how you do this. We've all agreed. Um, and a complicated problem is where maybe there are multiple answers, but yet they can, any of them would work. Mm. So we think of things like the example I always give is, you know, we say you're putting it, putting it as it was, uh, you know, a man on the moon. Mm. Uh, that was very complicated. But I mean, they could do it again and again. It was, it was Apollo uh, 11. So they had plenty of other times to try things out and then they could repeat them. Mm. So, you know, it's like, you know, you can do something, you know, it's going to work and you can do it again and again. That's very complicated, can be very complicated, um, but there's repeatability. And by analyzing, you can predict the future. And that's where, you know, we say engineers and scientists spend a lot of their, their work. But when you get into the complex world, that's where there isn't predictability. Because no matter how much we analyze the past, we can't really predict the future. Um, and if you take something like when we deal with people, like we are, that's the one thing that's predictable about us is that we are unpredictable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, we're even unpredictable, and particularly in our decision making, that like we're not even predictable during the course of a day. Like a lot of the research shows that you know a decision you might make in the morning uh, when you're nice and you know you're maybe awake and alive and you've had a bit of a walk and everything, and you're the same decision that you're faced with later on in the day when you're tired and your sugar levels are low, you make a completely different decision. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're like anytime we deal with human beings, we're going to be dealing with with unpredictability and human behavior. And if you think of where we are with, uh, with COVID, um, like trying to predict human behavior and response can be really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so when we think of complexity, I think we always have to think, is this predictable or not? If it's not predictable, we're definitely in a, a complex and we have a world and we have to look at, as you said, emergent solutions, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that it, I often think that when, you know, you hear sometimes people going, oh, the government don't know what they're doing. It's like, oh, course they don't <laughs> like yeah. that's surprising that they don't like it's not that yeah. they're incompetent or stupid not necessarily yeah. it's just that there isn't a correct answer yeah, yeah. Um, and we can I, you know we can say oh this worked in this country so we need to just copy it from yeah. different country yeah. so yeah. you know and, and that is the biggest mistake uh, the biggest mistake that that's made is that people think because they, they confuse something that, that's analyzable with something that's predictable. Mm. Just because you can analyze something does not mean you can predict it. So, I mean, yeah. everyone is able to analyze a football match when the match is over. Yeah. Everyone can tell you how, you know, Man United scored X number of goals. That's easy to do because you have all yeah. the evidence there and then yeah. this happened. But if you ask them to predict up front, you know, in what minute will the first goal be scored? You know, that now is into 
Party Power Bookmakers uh, yeah, territory. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, so we can always analyze. And this is, and maybe you, you might maybe share, I know you're very interested in things like bias. That's where hindsight bias comes in, where mm -hmm. we, in retrospect, we can all look back and say, oh, yeah, I know exactly how I got here. Yeah. But I wouldn't have been able to tell up front. And I know, I know you, you've got your own angle on like how we think about it. Mm -hmm.